I've got some new Meshtastic trackers here. These ones are from Meshnology, and they are based on the Seed Studio Wyo tracker, the L1. Real quick, there's an L1 and there's an L1 Pro floating out there, and to the best of my understanding, the L1 Pro comes with the case and the battery and the antenna, and the L1 is just the board. First off, we gotta get these things put together because they don't come looking this pretty, at least not the way I got them. All right, we got the tracker, we got the case, we got the battery pack. Let's get it put together. I guess I'm also gonna need some tools, but we'll figure out which ones we need when we get in there. So, first things first, pocket knife. And no, that's not how I cut my finger. It was much worse. See, I got a two pack here so I can talk to myself. Antenna, that is the GPS antenna. That's the SMA for this antenna. The FCC ID for the Wio Tracker L1. See, these aren't ham radios, so they need FCC IDs. Probably find some place to put that on the case when we get the case open. That looks like SX1262, battery plug, antenna plug. Don't know which antenna, oh, screen. Hold on, hold on. Solar, Grove sensors, nice. There's an E-Link ribbon cable there. Some switches and buttons and stuffs. Okay, now we need the case. If we've gotten far enough, we need to keep going. Nice 3D printed case, that works. So we've got to mount in the antenna. And you guys saw the instructions that I got with it too. There might be some on the website, but we don't need no stinking instructions. So there's some screws embedded in the plastic there. That's pretty cool. Are they screws or are they studs? They are studs. Okay, so the display part obviously has to go up front here so it can be seen. It can't go behind the battery, then you couldn't see it. We should have some buttons. And we do, we have some buttons. These are pretty cool. This is like grown-up Legos that do something. It's a joystick, even better. Okay, so we've got the joystick control thing. That goes on real easy, a little bit of texture there. We've got, is that the button for that thing? Okay. So that button just goes in there and lots of surface area, lots of attack surface. There are some switches and things over here and I lost my, my joy cap. So I'm gonna put the switches in first and I'm just doing a test fit now to make sure I get all the pieces where I think all the pieces should go. Because we need to install the SMA for the antenna and the SMA and the GPS antenna also. So the GPS antenna goes up there where you'd think that the big antenna goes. And then we route the, I guess that's a U.FL connector through the bottom there. So that would go like that and then like that. So that goes to there where it says GNSS. That takes care of that one antenna. And then the other antenna goes onto the seed part of the chip there. Okay, that fits in there and it's got a little locking shape. So the bottom of the SMA connector has a keyway and that keyway goes into that other keyway. And then those two go onto that board. Okay, it's getting to be pretty good. Pretty happy with where that GPS antenna is going to be. Should go there. So I'm gonna lock it down, that should be Oh, I was thinking that was like double-sided tape. That's that's not double-sided tape. So it's just going to sit in there. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier to do. And nobody's going to see how it sits in there. So I can put that there. And then I can take that antenna connection. And it's just a push fit. But you got to be squared up on it too at the same time. You can probably just go ahead and screw that right down right now. Which would give me... A little bit of strength to push against so that the board's not wobbling inside the case there. I'm going to take these Phillips head screws that have the coarse teeth and use those. And I'm trying not to over tighten it because the Phillips head screws are obviously going to be a lot stronger than the plastic case. And I just spotted this out of the corner of my eye. That is probably, yeah, that goes right there. And I kind of knew that would happen, but I'm not worried about it. It's part of the fun of putting this thing together is figuring out how to put this thing together. And that goes right into the top slot. I'll show you in a second. If I show you now, it's just gonna fall out. That wouldn't work very well. And now that I've created threads, I wanna spin that backwards until it grabs onto the existing threads. 
you hear that little snap sound? And what that does is make sure that I'm not cutting new threads into the plastic. And I think it's pretty awesome that designing and manufacturing, see that push button? Stuff like this now has fallen down into our own personal hands. We've kind of caught up with the, the big guys. And so now when I go to put this on, the board's not gonna move while the case is moving, while the antenna connector's moving, while the buttons are holding everything up. Fewer moving parts. And it goes on so much easier as a result. So I gotta figure out how I want this battery in there. And that says BAT, and we got a plus sign over here and a minus sign over there. So red is positive and black is negative. And it should only go in one way. All right, battery is in. We kind of shove the cable down in there a little bit. All right, let's work on this antenna next. Lock washer, there's two different kinds of lock washers. I really don't think we need two different kinds of lock washers. I guess they give you that for two different kinds of case assemblies. So I'm gonna use the star lock washer and that will secure that in place. And then there is our connector for that. All right, excellent. So that goes there. So I'm gonna put the antenna cover down first and then put the case down on top of it. And that kind of completes that look. And then we have a bunch of these little nuts to go in place. This is pretty slick how they design this. That slot right there, you take the nut and put it into the slot. And then when you put the screw in, it's gonna catch that and hold it in place. Then I'll do opposite corners. There we go, that was a bit of a tighter fit. All right, now for the GPS antenna. So I'd like for that to sit a little more flush, and I don't know if that's a 3D printing artifact or if I did something wrong, so I'm gonna take it apart and see if I did anything wrong. Okay, there we go, that looks, that looks a lot better. So before I get any farther, I'm actually gonna screw that one in first. Same thing, captive nut. There we go, all screwed up in a good way. Okay, looks like overall it's gonna be a pretty tight fit. Okay, I jiggled the battery a little bit and it fits in a little bit better. I feel better about that. I don't like to mess with those kind of batteries. And I could actually use the next size up Phillips head screwdriver on those to get a better purchase. Should be one more. I have more screws, I have two more screws. One, two. Three, I think that's it. Then we have some extra stuff. I think this is a size converter to go from one size battery to another, since it's red and black and has two different size connectors on it. This is your SMA cover. This is your 915 megahertz antenna. That fits on real good. Okay. And now that we have the antenna on, is that an on off switch? Probably need some charging and some programming. I'm gonna install the second one and I'll be right back. Well, I've got them both built. I got a black one and a green one. This is pretty cool. Again, I'll be able to talk to myself because I'm trying something new and I'm out in the middle of the desert. And anyway, it appears that I have the same amount of parts left over, but I'm missing a nut. Good thing I don't have a screw loose. I'm just missing a nut. And I looked around, maybe I dropped it off the desk, but there's there ain't no place for that. One, two, three. There should be one up here, but there's not. And then the one in the antenna. And then same thing over here. One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, so we've got some, some spare parts for some future projects. We'll put those in our project bin and hopefully we'll pass those down from generation to generation as we go through. All right, this one appeared to have enough charge. It lit up when I did that. And the other one, you could, there it is, meshtastic.org. So it comes with meshtastic on it out of the gate, but this one doesn't have enough charge to do that. I think I saw the light on. Nope, there it is. I don't know why they didn't work the first time. Maybe I was just being impatient, but these are ready to go with meshtastic. All right, so this here is actually pretty cool. These guys have been sitting here next to each other for a little bit. And if you look, this one can see ECBB, Echo Charlie, Bravo, Bravo. 
and this one here can see Foxtrot 7 Bravo Niner. NATO phonetics are cool. And that is the two devices. They can see each other, which makes it really easy for me to do the next part of the demonstration, which is going to be to pair the black one with the black phone. And if you bring up the Meshtastic app on your phone and it comes in, I don't even know what page it starts on anymore because it's always on the last page that I was in. There's all these different pages down here. On this last one, I can hit scan and it's going to scan for available devices. And it's found ECBB, this one, and it's found the green one. But like I said, to make it really easy for me to do the demo, I'm going to do black device on black phone. And then when I key it up, it gives me a pin number on the screen. If you don't have a screen, it's usually like one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. But in this case, this is my pin two, six, nine, one hundred. And I'm not afraid to share that with you because every time you do a pairing with a new device, it's going to give you a new pin, right? And it has seen, it says on here that it's seen this device, which is true. It just hasn't told me that through the phone app. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a little tiny bit of configuration, not a whole lot. Uh, let's just run through the menu real quick. Regions, United States, long, fast. We're going to stay off the internet. If you don't have a mesh in your area, you can set up MQTT. I have a video linked at the end of this video that shows you how to do all the MQTT stuff and to talk online. I don't need any security. If I go in there, you'll see my private key. And then, ooh, then you'll know all my private information about this specific Meshtastic device. Configuration. Long name, Meshtastic ECBB. If I change this stuff, this is where it gets a little hairy. I'm going to change it to be to dot black and i'm going to use that for the short name also if it allows that many characters yeah so that's as far as the short name goes as four characters i thought it was shorter than the long name when i save all of this it's actually going to reboot the device and i don't think it's going to tell me so we'll have to look real close yeah, so it reboots delivery confirmed that's an update it didn't used to say that before and we're not going to be able to do anything until this device reboots all the way. And so if you have one that doesn't tell you that, it's a patience game. Like, why can't I connect to the thing? If you just wait long enough, it'll automatically connect back up and it automatically connected back up. So now I have this one called to.black and that's gonna be easier for me to do the demo that I'm going forward with. So that is the black one out of the way. And now the reason why I wanted to call that one black is because this one's gray, but this one's green. So we're still gonna call it green just to make our lives easier. Uh, configure notification permissions, allow it. App notifications, critical alerts, show notifications. This is all the Android permissions to allow notifications and so on. And what I want to do with those notifications. And that's all good. Configure location permissions. So these devices, you saw when I was building them, they do have GPS inside. And now there's a little bit of a rattle in there. And they did give me these guys here to put inside the case. So maybe you might want to put that inside the case if you can find a good location for it. I'm not sure what part is rattling in there. It's got to be the battery because the other parts are screwed down. So this can use its own GPS and then this can share its GPS with the device, but the device has its own GPS. So I'm going to say while using the app, that's fine. And then a bunch of other stuff in there. And then we are in the app proper. And this is a larger tablet, so the layout's a little bit different. Let's go into settings. Let's go into connection. First, let's connect to a device. Meshtastic needs nearby device permissions. Yes, mirror by devices. Now we're scanning. There we go. So this is the green one, F7B9, Foxtrot 7, Bravo Niner. Pick it. We've got the numbers on the screen. 760579. Okay, and we're connected. And it tells me the firmware version that's on there. And we're good to go there. I'm going to go into settings again on this one. I'm going to go into user. And I'm going to change that name. And same thing when I do the save it's going to reboot it. There was that part in there about licensed ham stuff and licensed ham stuff disables encryption because encryption is not enabled in ham, not allowed in ham radio by our overlords. It will allow you to use higher power, which should allow you to transmit farther if you have higher power devices. All right, so we rebooted, we've reconnected, we're back up. You see how it says TOG up there. Let's go back to conversations. Let's go into long fast. Let's go into conversations. Let's go into long fast and let's see what happens just out of the gate. If I send, well, I don't know if they've seen each other yet, but we'll try it. Ah, oh, there it is. 
there's a little message there. And that message is totally configurable. I can reply here, send it. And now we're getting it on this device and you can see it on the screen. But this device here, the black one, look at that clock, that's pretty cool. It hasn't gotten a GPS lock yet, that's why it doesn't have the right time. This device here hasn't seen the update of this device with its new name. And you can see over here, this one still says ECBB, so it hasn't seen the update of its new name yet. And they'll, they'll sync each other, they'll work itself out, everything will be fine. One of the cool things I want to show you now that we've got these two talking to each other, which you don't need to do it first on the Android, but I wanted to show you first on the Android. Actually, we got the super zoom going on here. If we come in here, if you just press up or down on any one of the screen items, there's all there's a bunch of little icons at the bottom of the screen here. If I just press up or down, I can actually send a message. So to broadcast at long fast, so that should work fine. There's a couple of can messages in here. Hi, bye, yes, no, okay, exit. So let's send the, the yes message. And this is something that I noticed in this firmware. This joystick here is actually also a, a push button, not pressure sensitive, but sensitive to pressure, if you can kind of grok the difference there. And when I had different firmware loaded on this, it understood the bounce better than it understood the up and down. And this Meshtastic firmware seems to want to go up and down a lot more frequently than it wants to go enter. But it's a software thing and they can fix it. There we go. It's going to ask me again. Send message. Yes. Okay, it sent the message and we just got it over here. So 10 minutes ago from F7B9, it says yes. So now I can go back and I can do the same thing over here, but I can send free text. This thing has kind of a built-in keyboard to it. So I can mumble my way through this. All right. So now I've sent the message back. So not only can I use the Android app, which is super easy, to send messages back and forth. I can also compose messages on here. They have the ability to fix the firmware. Firmware changes on these guys super often. And I've also got a video on how to update the firmware on this, which is a really, really easy web browser based firmware update thing. All right, so that's actually a pretty big deal that the software allows you to do some composition on the screen and send messages back and forth. You can send some canned messages. You can probably store canned messages. You can type canned messages in if you can get past the crazy enter key, the pushing of the joystick. Like I said, other firmware doesn't do that. I tried MeshCore. Don't don't tell the Meshtastic people. I'm I'm dabbling in some. I'm experimenting. So there'll be a video on MeshCore when that finally gets to be working. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you these guys on Meshtastic and get these into your hands as fast as possible. So be on the lookout for firmware updates when you get it. Your Meshtastic app on your phone will tell you your Meshtastic app on your interface device because it doesn't matter if it's a phone or not will tell you when there's an update to the firmware. Don't forget to check the links in the description down below for where to get more information on these guys or to pick yourself up a set. In the meantime, I got the video right over here on MQTT and what to do if there's no mesh in your area. And then down here, I have another video for you on how to do that firmware update. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.